Opening statements have just wrapped up in the murder trial of a former NFL star. Instead of getting ready for the Super Bowl, former Patriots star Aaron Hernandez is now in court, charged with first-degree murder in the shooting death of Odin Lloyd. Lloyd was a semi-professional football player who was dating the sister of Hernandez's fiance. Mercedes Colwyn is a criminal defense attorney and Fox News legal analyst. Diana Eisman, a former prosecutor, thank you both for joining us. Great to be here. So prosecutors Thanks say for Hernandez. Me and his two friends, Carlos Ortiz and Ernest Wallace, picked up Lloyd at his house, drove him to an industrial park, and shot him. All three are charged with murder, the other two being tried separately. Uh, prosecutors not naming the actual shooter, a uh, Mercedes, they don't have to because the charge here is conspiracy or joint venture? Exactly right. So uh, frankly, what they wanted to do is maybe have somehow one of the three actually smoke the other two out. That's what they were hoping to. In fact, when they do this type of charging, when they do this type of conspiracy charging, there's always the hope, the belief that one of the three or one of the co-conspirators will come forward and say, oh, by the way, it was, I wasn't the shooter. It was that individual. I'll give you the evidence. Let's do a plea deal. That's not what happened here. Everyone's maintained their silence. They're coming forward. Hernandez is the first to come forward with this trial. So it's not, it's not unusual for the prosecutor to do this type of charging. Diana, motive always very important in these cases. Uh, Hernandez is charged with two counts of murder in a different case, a double homicide back in 2012. Lloyd, as we mentioned, was dating the sister of Hernandez's fiance, and the prosecutors say that they think Hernandez showed Lloyd where the bodies were buried in that earlier case, and that might be the motive for killing Lloyd. He literally knew where the bodies were buried, and that's uh, a reason for them to bring up this other murder case in the current case. But that has been banned, uh, seen as too prejudicial. Do you agree with that ruling? I do agree with that ruling. I think that evidence in another case that it, that is pending is irrelevant with respect to the charges here. Um, I can see why the defense would make that connection and argue that it is relevant, but I would also see why the judge would agree with the defense side um, I'm sorry, but the prosecutor, the judge would agree with the prosecution, the defense side, uh, to exclude the evidence. Um, I believe that there is sufficient evidence here from my reading of it uh, to implicate Hernandez in these murders. There is evidence of him being the driver of a vehicle that had the other two uh, defendants in it, as well as the victim arriving to the place where the victim was uh, ultimately killed. There is also evidence of him in his home holding a firearm that appears to be the murder weapon. However, that murder weapon was never recovered. Uh, there's further evidence of that he lied to his employers, uh, to Bill Belichick and to Mr. Kraft, and that evidence is going to be uh, admissible against him as well. Yeah, Mercedes, there are some people saying that this mm -hmm. case is light on uh, physical ev evidence, mainly circumstantial, mm -hmm. but uh, sure. you, you name other pieces of important evidence as well. Sure. I mean, they can look at the videotape is definitely damning. The fact that the ballistics, the shells were actually found in the car where Odom was the last time that he was found that he was found alive. He was in the car with Hernandez and the two other accomplices. So those types of ballistics evidence come forward, but the defense is going to step forward and say, no gun, no case. You don't have a gun. So you have this videotape of the three of them walking with Odom, but where, where's the videotape of who the shooter was? And where do you have the evidence that there was a, any of these men were shooters? Although there's been some talk that the defense are going to come forward and say that Hernandez was not the individual who pulled the trigger. It was the two accomplices, and they were the ones that were on drugs, on PCP, but all of this is sort of murky because the defense, until they hear the prosecution step forward and actually set forth their case, it's when they can do some of that last minute planning as to what the defense will be. But so far, they can come forward and try to defeat it, try to show that there's reasonable doubt. One being, of course, there's no gun. Right. Diana, as Mercedes just mentioned, uh, there's word that these accomplices took PCP in the days before the murder. Prosecutors say this should not come up in Hernandez's trial. He's not alleged to have taken it. Tell us why this PCP issue is so important. It's, it's really important because it's used to confuse the jury. Realistically, it has nothing to do with whether or not Hernandez was involved in these murders. And it's used as a defense tactic to confuse the jury, to say, well, these two individuals were on drugs, therefore they must have been the shooters. That doesn't make any sense. It's completely irrelevant, and I fully expect the judge to exclude it. It is going to be interesting to see if that has any impact on the trial of these other two who we said are being tried separately. All right, Diana Eisman, Mercedes Colwyn, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having me.